Omoyele Shawori is the presidential candidate of the African Action Congress, and he joins us now to have a conversation on Newsday. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. We are glad to have you. Thank you for bringing me. All right, the campaign trail is a thick and arduous one. February 2023 seems like a, it's a short time away. A lot of individuals are watching your campaign and criticizing, maybe even saying that it might not take you all the way to the presidency. Uh, regardless, uh, if there is a chance that you do not make it all the way, are you prepared to join up with another presidential campaign, uh, with another uh, party, that is, if you see that uh, getting towards February, things are not going the way you want to in order to realize your political ambitions? No, uh, our political party philosophy and ideology is different. I don't know where you got the impression from that uh, my campaign or our campaign cannot take us to the presidency. Which campaign takes people to the presidency? Is it the pay-to-play campaign or you know the paparazzi we see all over the place of people pretending to campaign in echo chambers? That's not, uh, that's not how to judge who will go to the presidency. It's the people who decide who will go to the presidency that will be reaching out to these people, Nigerians. Okay, you tweeted a couple of hours ago that when I hear them say Nigeria's situation is complex, I say elect a leader who understands how to use simplicity to resolve complexity. Now, I'd like you to break that down for us. If given a chance to become the next president of the country, how would you tackle the issues of security, education, economy, health care, corruption, and all the myriad of challenges that the country is facing at the moment? So the reason why I use the word complexity is because that's one excuse. It is the biggest alibi that uh, our old uh, political elite used to confuse the Nigerian people. Everything is complex to them. You know, uh, security is complex. And then they went and brought a retired general. He couldn't solve it. Economy is complex. They went and brought a banker. He can't solve it. Uh, education is complex. They went and brought a bricklayer. They can't solve it. Petroleum supply is complex. They went and brought a nuclear physicist. They can't solve it. But they throw all this at you, this vocabulary is at you and I, because they don't want us to believe that Nigeria can be fixed in any way. Part of the reason why I say Nigeria is not complex, I speak from the point of geography, that Nigeria is just a small country in terms of size. The entire country of Nigeria is just about the size of Alaska. In fact, Alaska, one of the states in the U.S., is bigger than Nigeria. If you fly from one section of Nigeria to the other extreme, it takes you less than an hour and uh, 15 minutes. And there's a country called the United States of America that takes you six hours to fly across from the east to the west, and is governed by one person uh, as president. And that person doesn't tell you every day is complex because he knew what he was going for in the first place. So. The simplicity of it is that there's a lot of low-hanging fruits out there in terms of how to solve the security problem. First, by ensuring that you motivate, you incentivize, you provide weapons, you provide leadership for the security agencies. You make sure that security agents are doing what they should be doing and not what they should not be doing. Police should be policing, the army should protect territory, the customs should collect duties and ensure that immigration ensure that borders are safe. If you have all these delineated areas of security, you know, specialties, you will not be complaining every day about some of the simplest crimes that you can solve. When it comes to education, invest in education. You have a problem with ASU, don't make it look like you can't solve it by providing just 200 billion naira to start uh, to ensure that ASU goes off strike. We have you know, investment that is needed in healthcare. Make the investment because the money has been assigned Several times, every year you always bring us huge budgets, you pad it, Nigerians don't complain, but when it's time for implementation and delivery, you start telling us that it's complex. If Nigeria is complex, why is it so easy to steal from Nigerians? Why is it so easy to manipulate the system and game the system? This is the reason why I keep saying Nigeria is not complex. What you have are people who have no capacity whatsoever, and you keep promoting them as the real deal. Uh, 
that that's been promoted to govern the country. You are not going to have a Nigeria that works when you keep giving social and political promotion to people who have failed Nigeria over these years, and you make them the frontline candidates. You, the, the media is complicit in this regard. People who don't come for interviews, you keep inviting their spokespersons. They never talk to you. But when it's time for debate, you say these are the frontline candidates. Who decided that they are frontline candidates where they don't even talk about issues to Nigerians? So let's deal with the issues with reality. Talk to people who have ideas, people with manifesto. You have candidates in this election who have no manifesto and have sworn that they may not provide one. But you keep promoting them as people with solutions. How do you find out your solutions when it's not in any written or any context to solve the problems that you claim you want to solve? So let's be serious. Stop manipulating the Nigerian public by presenting to them people who have no ideas and presenting people who have ideas as people whose campaigns are not serious. Well, Mr. It's Shori, serious campaigning that we're doing here. Well, Mr. Shori, it's, it's good that we have yes, you here and we're speaking directly to you about these issues. And you have discussed um, um, how you would tackle insecurity, uh, although briefly. But I do want to stem into the economy as that is the major issue of the day. We are in a Christmas period. We are knee deep in a uh, yeah. fuel scarcity uh, amongst a cost of living crisis. I mean, the list goes on and on. And you have talked about finding individuals who have the capacity to solve these problems because these problems do seem quite unsolvable. But seeing as you have a clarity of mind as to how some of these problems can be addressed, can you maybe help us tackle uh, the economy? What would you do uh, come February 2023 in order to alleviate some of the pains that Nigerians are feeling? So I'm probably the only candidate who has gone out there, and I've been doing it for almost four or five days now, pulling Nigerians on social media. Those ones that I know are prolific enough to discuss how to use And it's a business day of today, if you check on it. We, I went out there because you don't want to assume that you know the problems of Nigerians without talking to Nigerians. That's one of our major problems. It's like, how much does it really cost you to live in Nigeria? There's no presidential candidate today who probably can tell you uh, how much it costs and what consumes the most of our revenue, our income. And this day synthesized my first question today by saying that Nigerians spend more money on transportation and food. And there's nobody out of all the people that came back to us in this interactive and engaging polls, uh, not scientific, I, I would say, but I decided to make it public by just asking direct questions. None of them can survive on 30,000 naira, the minimum wage, you know, the slave wage you, you have in Nigeria today. All of them said food, transportation is number one. People have to buy internet. I asked them, how much do you spend on average on internet? How much do you spend on electricity? How much do you spend on, um, I mean, on water? Do you, do you have to build desk and chair for, to send your child to school? As I poll university students, how much does it cost you per semester to live on campus with your fees? And it turns out that, like I keep saying, these are low-hanging fruits that we can solve immediately. It doesn't cost a lot. That's why someone like me want to put the 100,000 naira per semester in, you know, in the pockets of Nigerian students who are in higher institutions after they've been verified to be there and doing well, following up on their studies. With regards to economy, you have to ensure that you invest in people. You invest also in policies and programs. I keep saying that you can have uh, an economic system in which those who are in charge of your monetary policy are only interested in contracts and selling dollars. Uh, you know, this our CBN that's a glorified uh, BDC, as uh, I like to call it. You can't have an economic system working when the person who is in charge of uh, policy at the level of uh, the executive arm don't understand economics. They don't understand what it means to develop or uh, grow the pile. You know, and you can't grow the pile without fixing electricity, without fixing certain parameters must be in place. I'm the one who can tell you this, and this is why we keep asking that you allow serious debates to happen, not hide some candidates and put some uh, other candidates you have, you know, grade one and grade two. When it's a matter of fact, the people you claim are grade one are not grade anything, and people who are grade one, you keep pushing them uh, so that Nigerians don't hear from them. That is where the competition should happen. So with that, look at the stupid policy, economic policy, the most important economic policy we ever undertook this last quarter of uh, 2022. We are 
you know, pouring dye, you know, removing the filter on the Naira. And since the change in Naira, has the economy improved? Have people found more money to eat? Have they been able to send their children to school? No. But you keep putting all these incompetent people to manage your economic policies, and then you keep pushing the question at those of us who said, no, this is not how it is done, that we don't know economics because we don't speak big grammar. We don't talk about stocks. You know? But the reason we don't talk about stocks is that stocks are not what define economic progress. It's the standard of living of your people. All these economic jargons that you hear outside there, if it doesn't have any impact on the standard of living of the people of your country, they're useless. That's why you know, our macroeconomic managers don't discuss uh, you know, purchasing power in the country. They will tell you about everything, you know, a policy, you know, talk about interest rates, they talk about, you know, uh, investment in the private sector, but they don't talk about the purchasing power of the Naira, they don't talk about employment and how to solve it. An economic system or a group of economic uh, managers that pushes your country, 133 million people into poverty, should be on the run. That's the truth. Is that's a crime against humanity to put 133 million people into poverty and announcing it gleefully, and in the midst of it, you are not talking about the value of Naira, you are not talking about economics, you are not talking about, uh, I mean, the value of Naira, economic development, you are not talking about no, how Mr. to grow the pie, you are not talking about how to pay people uh, minimum wages that can make them survive, you are not developing the economic sector, your countrymen and women are running away from your country, and you are not doing anything about it other than giving nomenclature to, oh, they have jackpot. You know, that's not a country that works. So all these policies, somebody needs to be in charge. Somebody that, is, that has will, that has an understanding of why you should have an economic system in the first place, and that economic system cannot be dependent on those who are outside. The people that benefit the most in Nigeria's economy today are people who dictate our economic policies from us from the outside. Where those of us on the inside are just told stories and theories about why we should tighten our bed. We've been tightening our bed since uh, the structural adjustment program. And those who ask us to tighten their, our bed are getting fat. Talking about tightening our belts, there's also this impression that Nigeria yeah. is not um, financially buoyant at the moment. The foreign reserves are depleted. Our rising profile, uh, our, our debt profile is rising. You know, so I'd like to know how you intend to tackle that issue because you talked about investing in education, investing in healthcare, releasing all the money needed. But where are you going to get the funds from? Since it seems like the foreign reserves is depleted at the moment, our debt profile is rising. We do need to repay those debts. How are you going to tackle those issues? So, so you have your foreign reserve depleted because the foreign reserve is not the reserve for the Nigerian people. It's a credit for the rich. You heard it from me today. You, can, you, you should not worry about the foreign reserve. You should worry about the local reserve that can feed people here so that Nigeria in 2022 is not going to be getting grain, bags of grain from the food and agricultural organization uh, around the world. But to talk about how do you get money, I get asked this question all the time. I'm on a TV show in Nigeria. It's like you guys have a repeat uh, dial on it. But let me show you some of how you can get your money that we can. The uh, RMA... Uh, RFC, that's the Revenue Mobilization Organization uh, uh, Agency of the Government, said there are 11 million, tri 11 trillion naira, 11 trillion, you heard it from me, of unremitted revenues from, you know, revenue generating agencies of government, 11 trillion. There are oil companies owing royalties, royalties in this country up to almost six billion dollars, six billion dollars. If you get that, you don't need to go and borrow money from China. Um, we have the NLNG, that is the body that, is, uh, that we invested in through uh, the NNPC. Uh, in gas, they have not given us or told us publicly how much we get in terms of return on our investment. Uh, in, uh, because they swore to an out of secrecy never to release this money publicly to the Nigerian people. The last time we heard about it was 4.5 billion or thereabout that they released when Buhari first came into office. Ever since then, have you heard about that? No. So I'm telling you that already, just by telling you three places, we have been able to track how we can get you know, money that's enough for the 2023 budget. So stop asking me where to get money from. We have money. Our problem is that we have money in wrong hands. 
let the Nigerian people get their own money. I want to renationalize the NNPC because it has become a burden on Nigerians as a private entity. At any rate, you don't privatize what belongs to the people without consulting with the people. And then you put individuals who are members of your political parties and cronies as the managing director and the rest, and they are telling us the central bank governor told you that the NNPC has not repeat, remitted a dime almost in a year now to the federation account. So why won't your uh, foreign uh, reserve be depleted right. when, you know, the, the, when the the, the, the way there's so many thieves stealing from it and hiding it away from the people. And when we say this, we say, oh, no, no, don't say that. Don't say that on our show. And I'm not referring to you, but I get that from a lot of TV stations. You need to tell the truth. Nigeria has money. Our problem is that our money are in wrong hands because we don't have leaders who care about you and me. And it is time that Nigerians stand up to these leaders, a lot of them fake leaders, elect people who truthfully can take this country in a different direction. Even if it's not in the interest of, you know, what powers, we must protect our own country and our own people. We cannot continue like this. All right, Mr. Shawori, uh, uh, thank you for clearing that up. And I know it must be annoying to go from interview to interview across the country and be asked the same question, but we do our job so that we can hear it straight from the horse's mouth. We're not the ones that come up with I the have ideas. No, I have and no you issue have, with you. I'm, and you I'm have, a media practitioner, you too. Have so cleared I it up but I'm just us. saying that you have cleared when you hear the, when you hear the are, answer from me, also repeat it. We yes. are also very thank appreciative you. that you have shared that with us. Um, we only have a little bit more time left. And um, you, you come across as very upset, very annoyed, very uh, irritated, and it's understandable. The, the things that are going on in this nation, it's nothing to laugh about. You have been uh, thrown in jail, you have been detained, you have been villainized, we have been watching you for years as you have been trying to realize this, your political ambition of becoming president, and surely it has grated on your nerves. But um, as other people are watching, uh, as you said, competent people who can step into the arena to help, they watch your own journey and they're discouraged. I mean, you're an individual who lives out, of, I, I assume lives out of the country and has um, a family and a life out there. You have things going on for you, but you are in this political system and it is dirty, it is dangerous and it is petty. Uh, we know the reasons why you're in there. You want to get all the way to the end, but what ways can you convince other Nigerians who are competent to join in on the crusade in order to save the country? Because it, we've been saying this for years, competent people are not joining as fast or, or getting the positions that they need to be uh, for whatever reason. How can that be changed? Uh, because until that is changed, it seems like we're going to be repeating the same cycle of politics that we have seen since the beginning of time. Well, let me let me thank you. Uh, you want to see me smile sometimes? Yes, really. I can smile. But, you know, it's very disheartening. <laughs> uh, it's very disheartening. Uh, and anybody with due respect to Nigerians, anybody who's lived in this country and seen this country degenerate and just... Uh, been thrown down the hill, uh, you know, ideas and competent people being thrown uh, down the toilet would always be upset. It's justified and righteous anger to know that people don't need to live in poverty, but they are being impoverished and denigrated and dehumanized uh, by a few people. So that's why you should understand. I'm not so ambitious I want to become president, but I want to live in a country that accepts me as a human being uh, because I've had some opportunity to live in countries that are not even mine and they care about me somehow. You know, why would my own country become an appetite of black people? That's why you see I'm angry. Uh, but you see, we, when you talk about competent people, competent people are also watching. You know, a lot of competent people are complacent. A lot of competent people are afraid. Uh, because they've seen what happened to the few competent people out there who have staked their lives uh, and, and their reputation and how they have been dragged all over the place. You mentioned in the last four years, as a citizen of this country, I've not been allowed to leave Nigeria. They seized my passport. They shot at me. They detained me. They killed my brother in this country. So, but that's not the reason why I'm contesting. I'm not contesting to come and avenge you know, the killing of my brother. They've been, they've been handling me this way since I was 18 years old when I arrived at the University of Lagos as a freshman in uh, 1989. So, nothing to worry about. But I want a situation where competent people can have the breaching space to do good. 
the problem with Nigeria is that the space to do good has become it has shrunk to zero and we need to expand that space both democratically socially and economically and you see this country bloom i don't want to live forever in a country that's in darkness i don't want to live in a country that cannot construct 100 kilometers of road in 20 years i don't want to live in a country where students have to be out of school for nine months out of uh, 12 you know because of a disagreement and i don't want to live in a country where people get asked where would you get money from and the thieves con completely in the country are getting money to buy whatever they want they buy every toy in this world rose royce they buy private jets they build houses you know empty mansions all over the place and we keep asking those who need the money where we're going to get the money from and that's that's something that we need to address but we are putting our lives on the line to ensure that maybe one day the country will produce that space for competent people, good people, uh, and people with great ideas and knowledge to have a space. Because right now, everybody has come to accept almost uh, as a rule that incompetent people are the ones that we believe in. We believe in the thieves amongst us to rule us. We believe in drug barons amongst us to organize our country. We believe in those who game the system, those who shall change the system, violators of human rights. Those are the prominent people in our country. They are the ones who get the shift and sit titles. They get the national honors. And competent people are, you know, just consigned to the dustbin. I want a reversal of that. Why incompetent, wicked, and dishonest people are tossed into the dustbin of history in our country so that the competent people of Nigeria can fix Nigeria. Nigeria needs to be fixed and is urgent. And it's something that must be done without delay. Otherwise, as I keep saying, there will be a revolution and you can't stop it.